check for parallax, and then read the horizontal circle value from the screen. Book it down, check the pointing, and check the reading. Now free the clamps and rotate the telescope to station Z. Exactly the same procedure now takes place in order to get the face left horizontal circle reading to station Z. The ranging rod is sighted and the vertical hair is lined up with the nail in the top of the station. Check for parallax. Read the horizontal circle value from the screen. That completes the procedure for taking face left readings. The next step is to take face right readings. Free the vertical clamp and transit the telescope. Free the horizontal clamp, rotate the telescope and line it up once more with station Z. Now line up the vertical hair on the diaphragm with the nail in station Z. Check for parallax. Read the horizontal circle value from the screen and book it. Check the pointing and check the booking. You now go on to take face right readings at stations Y and X. When you have done this, you will have a round of angles. That is, a set of face left readings and a set of face right readings. However, everybody makes mistakes, so it is common practice to take at least two rounds of angles. You should take them in such a way that you obtain different horizontal circle values to provide a completely independent set of readings. Transit the telescope, so you again start on face left, but for this second round, Set the horizontal circle so that the screen reads between 90 and 91 degrees on face left to the reference object and carry out a complete set of observations. When you have finished, compare the results with the first round. If you get agreement to within plus or minus 10 seconds for a 5 second theodolite, you use the mean values of the angles for your calculations. If you don't get a good enough agreement, do a third round, setting the initial reading to between 180 and 181 degrees. A fourth round would have an initial reading between 270 and 271 degrees. This then completes the procedure for measuring horizontal angles. Although electronic theodolites have greatly simplified angle measurement, it is still advisable to take vertical angles after you have completed taking any horizontal angles to avoid any confusion when booking the readings. Vertical angles are obtained from the vertical circle, which is situated at one end of the trunnion axis. When you measure vertical angles, the target for sighting can take several forms. For example, you can use an elastic band placed on a ranging rod at the same height as the trunnion axis above the theodolite station. This would be suitable for slope correction work. The diagram shows you the principle involved. Set the theodolite in the face left position. Sight the ranging rod with the telescope as you did for horizontal angles. Set the horizontal hair through the target at station X. It isn't necessary to use the exact intersection of the crosshairs as we have done here, but you should use roughly the same part of the horizontal hair each time. Remember to check for parallax. Because you have already leveled the horizontal circle, the vertical circle has been brought automatically into a vertical plane. Also, because you indexed the vertical circle earlier, its values are automatically displayed on the screen next to the letter V as the telescope is elevated and depressed. In electronic theodolites, the way in which the vertical circle is graduated is preset into the instrument. Usually, the standard presetting is such that when the theodolite is in the face left position, the vertical circle is graduated as shown in this diagram. On face left, angles of elevation give readings less than 90 degrees and angles of depression 
give readings greater than 90 degrees. On face right, elevation is greater than 270 degrees and depression less than 270 degrees. So, in order to get the face left vertical circle reading to station X, all you have to do is to read the value displayed on the screen opposite the letter V. In this case, the reading is 92 degrees, 34 minutes, 35 seconds, which indicates an angle of depression of minus 2 degrees, 34 minutes, 35 seconds. This is obtained by subtracting 90 degrees from the reading. If required, the angle of elevation or depression can be displayed as a percentage. This is useful when measuring or setting out the gradient of a slope. It is done by pressing the percentage key, which in this particular instrument shares a dual function with the horizontal circle direction arrow. Since the arrow is the default setting, the percentage function must be activated by changing one of the internal parameter switches. The instrument must first be turned off before any of these switches is changed. And when it is switched on again, the vertical circle must be indexed. The conversion is based on the principle that a vertical angle of 45 degrees is equal to a gradient of 100% and is given by the formula percentage vertical angle is equal to 100 times tan theta, where theta is the angle of elevation, positive, or angle of depression, negative, relative to the horizontal. For example, a vertical circle reading on face left of 93 degrees 25 minutes 20 seconds corresponds to a vertical angle of minus 3 degrees 25 minutes 20 seconds which converts to a percentage gradient of 100 times the tangent of minus 3 degrees 25 minutes 20 seconds which equals minus 5.980%. In this case, the vertical circle reading of 95 degrees 41 minutes 35 seconds converts to a gradient of minus 9.969% when the percentage key is pressed. A further press of the same key restores the vertical circle value. So, book the vertical circle reading. Check the pointing and check the booking. Now transit the telescope and repeat the whole procedure for the same station, but this time on face right. This is done to eliminate any errors caused by the vertical circle indexing being out of adjustment. Unlike horizontal angles, it is only possible to take one round of vertical angles, that is, face left and face right. The mean of the two values is used. You then repeat the procedure to any of the stations to which vertical angles are required, in this case to station Y and to station Z. Do not start packing up the theodolite until you are perfectly happy with the angle values obtained. It's essential to take additional readings if you're not sure. Open the box. Switch off the theodolite. Put the telescope in a horizontal position. Align the theodolite as it was when you took it out of the box. Do up the horizontal and vertical clamps, but only lightly. Bring the foot screws to the middles of their runs. Now keep hold of the theodolite with one hand and undo the tripod centering screw with the other. Put the theodolite back in its box. The reason you opened the box earlier is so that you don't have to put the theodolite on the ground in order to open the box now. Carefully lift the tripod away from the station. Slacken the clamps on the adjustable legs and collapse the legs to their shortest length. Fasten the straps and tighten the clamps. 
you can now move the theodolite and the tripod to the next station. If you need to sight this station from the next one, put a ranging rod next to the station to help you to find it. <laughs> 